What's up guys, Inigami here, and let's go through treasure map Nami on the Japanese version of One Piece Treasure Cruise. Nami is a uh, striker's cerebral captain, boosts attack of striker and cerebral characters by three times. If you're above 50% health, only boosts striker and cerebral characters by two times below 50% health, and reduces the cooldowns of all specials by one at the start. Her limit break abilities are uh, pinch healing and orb bind removal. Limit Break Sailor abilities reduces the silence on her by three turns and makes Int Ores beneficial for herself. Her special is where Nami's really good and it's on an 11 turn cooldown that reduces Paralysis, Attack Down, Chain Multiplier Limit, Chain uh, Coefficient reduce Reducer, Burn, and Blindness by three turns. So it reduces all of those negative debuffs by three turns and changes Block and Badly Matching Orbs into Matching Orbs. And before we actually get into Nami, I do have like one pull that we got already. So let's go ahead and see what we get. It is guaranteed to be a legend because it's the 100 point pull. So guaranteed legend. It's a gold to red legend. Usopp's a funny looking legend. But, um, you know, he's, he's still great. Totally great. So the mini bosses this time around are going to be Whitebeard, Brownbeard, Rayleigh, and Blackbeard. There is no ambush on Nami, unfortunately. So there's no ambush Nami, no Crockenbush, no Toucans. We just have the mini bosses and Nami as a final boss. Which is... I, I like the ambush a lot more. But it does also mean... Or they did raise the base points of Nami. So Nami starts off at higher base points than other treasure maps to start out at. So, you know, a little give, a little take. This treasure map, we can hit four, uh, three of the bosses. And I like going to the left here so we can try to get that rainbow spot. But go get as many bosses as you can. Brownbeard, gonna be our first fight. Remember that if you fight them on the map, they're gonna be way, way easier than you fight them on the final stage. And I am using teams with a lot of legends. Use whatever teams you like. Try to get as many points boosts as you can. This time around, or at least on a Japanese version, if you're watching this for the global guide, there are going to be a lot of different points boosters. For the Japanese version, actually really easy to do these teams relatively free to play. I'm only actually using two legend captains, that being Cavendish and Rayleigh. They're not even great captains. Easy to replace them. For Brownbeard, we are using a double legend Rayleigh team. Don't need to use Rayleigh at all. Uh, really, the thing that we want to use on this is the Shanks and the Rob Lucci. Rob Lucci gives us a conditional attack booster. Shanks gets rid of the three turns of paralysis that we're going to get on Brownbeard. But besides that, really, you can replace the release for anybody you want. The Ambush Cavendish I have on this team is just to get limit break points. The Buggy is to get limit break points. That's all they're here for. Rob Lucci, Shanks... Everyone else doesn't matter. Brownbeard starts off at 3.4 or 340,000 hit points. Paralyzes you for three turns, and that's basically it. The only thing else Brownbeard does is if you use a tight booster, Brownbeard will blow away two dudes, so don't use tight boosters on Brownbeard. Use a paralysis remover, use Rob Lucci special to delay, deal some damage, and also give you conditional attack booster. And if it's early on, it just kills it right out. But later on, you can imagine that you actually have to attack. Uh, you can use an affinity booster. There's a few int affinity boosters available to you. But for now, that takes care of that. Against Blackbeard, we're going to be using our new ace. New ace, new Sabo. Literally all you need to use, ace, Sabo, nobody else. Because Blackbeard is going to limit us to two specials per turn. And you know what? Two specials work great. One A special, one Sabo special. Blackbeard is also going to give us all block orbs. And hey, you know what takes care of block orbs? One Ace and one Sabo special. Blackbeard has, starts out at 500,000 hit points. He attacks every turn for 4,300 hit points. He will give you all block orbs. He'll lower your chain and he'll limit you to two specials per turn. Like I said, one A special, one Sabo special. Also counters like all the stuff that Blackbeard does. It's just really, really easy. One Ace, one Sabo, and no one else matters. I am using Nami on this team because Nami's points boosted on our own treasure map. And hey, good way to get limit break points. Super easy fight. 
Next we have Rayleigh. Rayleigh is Dex. We're going to be using our op oven team. I keep wanting to call him Opera Oven Team. A double oven is going to be all you need for a very long time. Oven special ability deals tons of damage. Uh, we're also going to be using a um, Ambush Garp for the revive. So Ambush Garp is there for revive, but for a first mini, first dozen or runs or so, Oven Special alone is enough to just kill him right away. A raid boss of Gainu is nice. That's an infinity boost. Arlong is a orb boost if you need it. And we do have the Fortnite lady here because she's points boosted. That's really all that matters, points boosters, right? Boss Rayleigh is going to rewind our sailors by two turns. Also going to print the boss on himself for two turns. Starts at 530,000 hit points. Attacks every turn for, at a start, 4,450. So we're going to use our oven specials. Remember that oven special deals more damage depending on how many primary color orbs that he has. Empties them all, gives you matching orbs, and also boosts your uh, gives you an orb boost. You can replace the Arlong for Raid Boss Kizaru. So that way, if your Garp special were ready, you could rewind that special in Garp and actually use Garp special there. But Rayleigh doesn't do anything dangerous uh, until you get him below 50%. Below 50%, he'll start paralyzing you and give you no healing. Uh, so if you get to the point where you can't just burst him down with special abilities, you can just pass a turn, take a hit, use Kizaru's special, rewind your specials, burst him down, use Garp on the revive. Whitebeard, the last of the mini bosses, is the one that matters the most, which uh, legend you're using. This one we really want to have a Cavendish. Of course, you can always just use a friend legend Cavendish. Friend Cavendish. Zoro with a straight driven team is a great free to play team because we're going to want to have a uh, Raid boss Zoro at the minimum because Raid boss Zoro will help get rid of the percent damage reduction he has and He's going to give us a tiny 1.1 times attack and or boost and Cavendish will get rid of those so ambush cat or raid boss Cavendish. I mean legend Cavendish Raid boss Zoro Whitebeard Starts at 700,000 hit points, the highest of the mini bosses so far. Has percent damage reduction, gives you a small attack boost and orb boost. This is the one that's possibly the hardest of the mini bosses, but all the mini bosses around this time, not too bad. We want to use our Cavendish. Use Cavendish first before you use your Zoro, so you make sure you get that affinity boost. Uh, you can actually use characters who help you out. You can use, put Dofi in the middle so that we actually get matching orbs. But that's all we need. A one and a two. Cool beans. Uh, put some better characters on there as subs that we actually get some matching orbs here and there. You can also try to stall it out, but don't leave Whitebeard alive for three turns because on turn three, Whitebeard will blow away two of your sailors for three turns. So Whitebeard blows away sailors, blow 20%, boosts his attack, blow 50%, binds your orbs. Use a Cavendish friend and captain. Use a Zoro to get rid of that percent damage reduction. Pretty, pretty straightforward. All right, Nami. And for the first time in a long time, Nami is the hardest part of this treasure map. Usually it's like one of the mini bosses that's surprisingly difficult. But Nami is the only really part in this treasure map that you actually gotta work out or look out for. We're gonna be using a Law Carrot team. Law Captain was great for this. Carrot Friend Captain is great. Nami has a lot of damage threshold and barriers on her final stage. And Carrot means we get through all that. Very, 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 very important. If you are using a Carrot team, make sure you actually have your cooldowns short enough that you can actually use Carrot. Like You're going to need uh, cooldown reduction sockets because if Carrot's 12 turn stalls out, then you just end up having like a floopy not good captain so make sure you have those limit breaks and uh, cooldown reductions or if you get the cooldown reduction spot on the map that's super good we have Robin on this team the uh, treasure map rare recruit Robin which is nice she do you limit broken on this team is very very nice because on the final stage Nami she is going to silence our characters for two turns she do reduces silence on all characters by one turn so basically, we only have one turn of 
silence for later on whenever we actually need to take two turns to attack her. Now, Shiryu and and um, Burgers here. Shiryu and Burgers are only one class boosted. They are only fighter and or fighter slasher driven characters, so they do not have full attack boost by Carrot. So keep that in mind whenever you're doing your attack order that they don't have as high attack boost as your Robin or whichever other character you're using. On Nami, on stage 6, she's going to rewind all your specials by 2 turns. Or, rewind Sailor specials by 2 turns. She's also going to despair your captains for 2 turns. If you leave her alive, she starts getting more and more annoying. On turn 1, she's going to give you a attack boost for... One turn, which is nice, but she does also reduce her damage taken by 30%. So it basically kind of uh, evens out. On turn 2, she's going to boost your attack by 1.5 turns. And then get 99 turns of damage reduction. So you want to kill her ASAP. Now if you're using a carrot friend, you don't have to worry about that damage reduction. She basically just boosts your damage. But having that law does mean that we get to kill her a lot quicker because we don't have to... Well, we can get rid of that despair. And reduces all our cooldowns by one turn. Or at least reduces the cooldowns of some characters. Except for Colosseum Magellan here. But Colosseum Magellan is really good, really good and you'll see why. Nami silences all our characters for two turns. Becomes one turn with Shiryu. Magellan also resists silence on himself. Nami has Toxic Resist and one turn of damage threshold, and has homies with barriers on him. The barriers obviously don't matter to Carrot. If you kill all the homies, then Nami will revive her homies once again, so don't spend your time killing the homies if you can't kill Nami just yet. The homies do attack. They only attack for a few thousand damage. Not very threatening at all. We are going to use Magellan. Now, she has Toxic Resist, which is not poison or strongly poison resist. So you can still poison and strongly poison all of the characters on her stage. This homie only has a few hit points, so this will die to regular poison. These homies each have about 60,000 hit points, so they will survive that regular poison. Nami will take a lot of damage from that strongly poison, so make sure you're targeting Nami with that strongly poison, because you only ever strongly poison one character. That also gives you that boost in damage. If you want, you can do this on turn two. Just take your first turn to kill some homies. You can kill all the homies on turn one. And then on turn two, when you have your specials back, you can burst down Nami if, whenever things actually get harder and you have to actually do that. But for now, just that Magellan Poison will let me kill her. But later on, pass one turn, kill the homies, take a hit from Nami. On turn two, or on, on turn one, sorry, Nami will give you some recovery, tandem, and uh, she'll shuffle your orbs, give you recovery orbs, tandem orbs. Law's captain makes recovery and tandem count as matching. So, double good reason to use Law. Then on turn two, you have your specials back. Shiryu will kill all the homies with his, with his special ability. Burgers before the rest for the type boost. Carrot for the orb boost. Magellan for the conditional attack boost. Oh, here's a ticket pull. Uh. Is gold better than a silver? No, oh, it's Cavendish. I already maxed the little break. Ivan Zinyami, thank you so much for watching. Y'all stay beautiful. Nami doesn't shuffle. She changes badly matching and block to matching. No, let no 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 no. Not her special ability. Uh, Nami, what she actually does during her fight on turn one. 